Hey and welcome to the second episode of Trust the Process. On the previous episode, we've met my new client W and held a strategy session on the way to update their brand and create a new website for them. Now it's time for me to present the strategy to them and get some feedback. If we've got the strategy right, we can progress with planning the website. This is the slide that I showed on the first meeting, trying to set the context to in general what we're doing here. Is try to make sure that when we get to the design, actually building stuff and making visuals and stuff, it actually represents and is, is aligned with who you really are, who, what you're doing, your vision, and, and how you're acting. And so that, that's the goal of this whole exercise. Now, today, as I said, looking at everything that we, we discussed, um, I. I kind of uh, found or, or it was apparent to me that there's two things in general that are the most challenging communication wise. And so the first one is what are we in the sense of like, you don't want to put yourself in a box. We had this discussion, like all the, all the frameworks that we know, like a company, a nonprofit, um, you know, a platform, we were discussing all of these kind of categories of how to define ourselves, including womb. And the reason was that in a sense, we do, we are not, it's still evolving. We don't want to put ourselves in a box, especially um, it was mentioned like boxes, a lot of times were defined by men and it might not be relevant. And so, but not wanting to be in a box is very confusing because how do you explain people? What do you do if you are, if you're not sure what word um, you're using? And so that was the that was the first challenge. The second challenge was about how to communicate authentically in a sense that, you know, you've learned as you've you've grown as a, you know, as an organization that not everything that you do is happy and fluff and you want to be able to communicate both, you know, the light and the dark of everything that's taking place and that's how do you communicate that? How do you how do you actually keep it real and um yeah, make sure that what you represent is not just like a fluff, it's actually what's really going on. So I think those are the main challenges and that's what I was trying to, to address and think about. So let's start with the first one, um, what are we? So the first thing that I did is I actually went to, to look at other organizations like that are doing maybe similar things, maybe not similar thing, but try to see like how other organizations define themselves to see if it makes sense um, to use the same language or to help us understand what's not working for us. Mm -hmm. So just a few examples that I was looking at. Um, Elevate, I don't know if you know them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So they say, they say what they say about themselves is we're a global network of professional women committed to elevating each other through education, inspiration and opportunity. They're, so they call themselves a, a global network. They actually have, you know, products in, the, in a sense of they're doing events, they have a membership that people pay for, so they have... It's minimum $500 a year. Yeah, they have a bunch of, yeah. a bunch of services, but I thought this was, okay, it, it's, it's a community as well, but they call it like a global network. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, and I thought that global was a good word because some of the things that we were talking about when I was asking you where do you want to be like in five years and stuff like that, one of the first things that you mentioned is we want to have impact in a you know across the globe so that was interesting um then lean in if you know that um it's cheryl sandberg's organization that's i guess a, a classic nonprofit. so they want to offer women ongoing inspiration support uh, help them achieve their goals i think that after you know what we've discussed currently it's not like a classic nonprofit, so it doesn't make sense in that way um but it was also interesting to see how they present themselves, you know, in a sense, in, in the website, like um, what words do they use, what visuals do they use. 
Um, then another one, because the word sisterhood was mentioned quite a lot, so there's actually an organization called PEO, which is Philanthropic Educational Organization Sisterhood, um, and they uh, call themselves International Women's Organization. There's actually a lot of international women's organization um, with a bunch of members, primary focus on providing educational opportunities for female students worldwide. So International Women's Organization was another way of thinking about this. Mm -hmm. Then another thing, something completely different, uh, Motor Maids is a woman motorcycle club. I so, love it. Yeah, they're actually a really, really cool organization. Um, wow, it's sexy. Yeah, it's, uh, they have a really, really cool br brand, um, even though they're actually a pretty small organization, but, um, but a club is just something mm -hmm. else to, um, to consider. Mm -hmm. Um, then here's what we were talking about and we, we try to do this exercise to kind of uh, say what we want. And so what the final iteration of that was W is a womb that gives birth to the awakening of women leaders all around the world who want to turn themselves on and take action in an area of, of burning need for gender harmony. And so when I read this, yeah, when I read this after, you know, seeing reading a lot of other things just for reference, um, I thought, you know, this is pretty unique, okay? We can really say that only we say this about ourselves, but then again, I don't think that it's clear. I mean, I thought it was really interesting, but I thought like, if I'm going to say this to somebody else now, are they actually going to really understand? Like, <laughs> what is this? What, what's going on here? I, I thought- that, who want yeah. to turn themselves on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've imagined a bunch of women masturbating together. <laughs> Um, so I, I try to, after thinking about this, I try to make an adjustment to this and this is what I came up to. I changed a few things. I changed it to W is a global community that advances the awakening of women leaders all around the world who want, to, who want support of a strong sisterhood when pursuing more out of life in an era of burning need for gender harmony. And we don't respond yet. Yeah, don't respond yet. Just let it sink. You can read it. Let me read it again, and then you can have it sing, and then think about this all through the end, and then we'll discuss this. So W is a global community that advances the awakening of women leaders all around the world who want to support a strong sisterhood when pursuing more out of life in an era of burning need for gender harmony. All right. So that was uh, regarding the first question of what are we? So now let's talk about um, authenticity. So. I asked you the question, like, if you are a part of the W community, so what does that mean about you? What, what does that mean? Um, so you said that it means that you are authentic, it means that you are wild, it means that you are powerful, it means that you are ambitious, it means that you are helpful to other women, and it means that you value change. So all these things are true, but, you know, looking at all of my notes, from everything that you said, I think that there's one word that really repeated itself over and over again with a lot of the things that you said, which was wild. And so you said wild a lot. And so I try to look into that and understand what that actually means, means because I, I actually, I think it's pretty open to interpretation. So I didn't know, so I actually Googled wild woman to understand what that means. And actually, I, I found a piece of, uh, I'm not sure if it's an article or a poem or something, um, but reading it had like a lot of what you were talking about. So I want to read it back to you and just to see if it makes sense to you. So to be wild means to be led by the heart. And what I mean by heart is the passion that ignites life and purpose in someone's being. A wild woman is neither good or bad. She's right in the middle playfully creating her own sense of balance. Wow. She shows you dark and light. She's been at the top of the world just as much as she's been at the lowest place you could imagine. I want to cry. A wild woman keeps it real, so she uh, shares with you her most delightful moments and the saddest one because she's not afraid of showing her vulnerable self wow. on a good or a bad day. I have goosebumps. She's equally comfortable under the sun or and under the moon, 
She's the definition of raw. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's the definition of W. I mean. yeah. And this is from a poem that's called What It's Like to Love a Wild Woman, which wow. is which was I, written I, I, by a Palestinian uh, that's I, living yeah, in she's, Jordan. She's, she's like, amazing. She's familiar. Like, ah, you know her? Yes. Okay. Sure. She's amazing. Okay. So I didn't know her, but yeah, that was, I thought yeah. that was powerful. And I thought that it really reflected a lot of the things that um, you were saying to me. So it kind of led me to think about, it led me to think about the big idea. Now, the big idea is, there is this, in, in branding in general, there is this pyramid of, of messaging, right? So usually, like from the name, which is usually just a one word or two words, down to, you know, um, what's your value proposition, or what's your story. So every brand, you can summarize it in a word, but then you can also talk about it for hours. So it's kind of a pyramid. Um, and a big idea is right at the top. Um, sometimes people call it slogans, and, and sometimes uh, you know it usually from organizations like Nike, Just Do It, or Apple Think Different, these type of stuff, which are actually some kind of like a message or an idea that really everything is aligned to it, and it, it, um, it, it kind of acts as, as a beacon of where, where you're going. Um, and I was thinking about this, like what's the, what's the big idea behind W, um, after I was reading this poem, and what came to mind was embrace your wildness in a sense that it's okay to be who you are. It's okay, you know, mm. if you're not what other people want you to be. It's okay if you're not perfect as you would want to be. It's okay to have both, you know, male, female, uh, you know, all the other sides and conflict that um, you were mentioning. And, you know, you, and part of what, how we serve you is help you embrace that and, and be, be yourself in that way. Um, so I thought this could be really kind of a, a, a front and something that can really, you know, serve as, as a beacon to, to what you're trying to do. Now, taking this to the next step is kind of like, okay, so what's the value proposition? Like, how do you explain this thing? when somebody's interacting with you, like what is it that they get from, you know, what is it that you're selling or you're offering all the people who actually interact with you? So that's, you know, the value proposition. So thinking about that, I, I thought that the way to explain that would say that W helps you to transform your life with the support of a sisterhood of wild, ambitious, helpful women, right? So this is, what, this is what they get by interacting with you. And it doesn't really matter if it's in a specific event or, or you know, by reading your content or by having the support of the community. This is basically what they get. They get to transform their life because they are a part of this sisterhood and because the type of women that are there are they're wild, they're ambitious, and they're helpful. So this is, I think, the value proposition of, of working with you. Now, the, the last step in the pyramid that we're, we're, we're talking now in this context is kind of the narrative, the story. Okay, so how, what is the context of this value proposition in, in the world as we know it today, right? So that, that's like the basic story that you're telling other people. In, in, by the way, in different, uh, this is an adaptation of my normal presentation, which usually is to more kind of business, corporations and stuff like that. I kind of adapted it because this is not, maybe you'll take this to investors or something else, but it's more like, how do you tell your story? So I would say that the story goes something like this. So the world is desperate, desperately needs uh, gender harmony in the context of everything that's going on right now. Um, you said that topics of women is becoming hotter and hotter, but it also uh, comes with, with conflicts and with issues. And, and you said that we really need to make, it's not against women against men or, you know, somebody have to, has to win here. It has to work together. Um, and there's a need for, for feminine leadership. You gave the example of, of Lady Gaga, but we need women who are brave, who can talk, who can lead, who can be open about um, who they really are and what happened to them. But so many women forget what it means to be women, right? So they, you know, they, they follow along or they do what they're expected, even if it's, you know, in, in terms of career, but it, they're not embracing who they really are as women. 
And actually what they feel is they feel lonely and bored and unauthentic to who they really are. And this is where W gives them the support of a sisterhood of ambitious, helpful women to help them actually embrace their wildness. And that helps them to transform their lives. So this is, I think, the story of W. Mm. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> So the presentation went really well. Obviously they had some feedback and clients always had feedback and we always have to kind of tweak the wordings a little bit. But in general, I think it was very obvious that they thought that the strategy really captured their company well. I think that was the most revealing meeting because somehow I was like, okay, he will probably come up with uh, some things that I've seen before, okay? Or some wording that, um, we have heard and suddenly you came up with this poem that I've heard before but it was just like expressed in such a different way and then suddenly you come with like turn on your wildness and I was like this is what it is because it felt so personal and at the same time it was uh, the common denominator that we see in so many women you know they want to wake up they want to be turned on again and I think it was beautiful that a man was able to grasp it in such, a, in such an accurate way. To start planning the website, I've divided the session into three parts. The first part was around goals for the website. And this includes their goal, what the company is looking to achieve with the new website, and also what are the goals of the visitors that actually visit and consume the content in the website. The second part of the discussion was around what content is needed in the website, what should be on the home page, what other pages should be on the website. Now for them, one of the core content that was super important to include in the new website was content from one of the new offerings that's called Vulnerability Bios. It's a one-day workshop where women come and rewrite their bios and have their uh, portrait taken by a good photographer. They wanted to showcase a variety of these portraits and stories on their website and so the website had to include both a way to present all those stories and a way to experience and read them. The third part of the session was around the look and feel of the design how the, the website should look like, what kind of a typography or a color scheme do they find appealing. I've started out by showing a few examples that I thought might be a good fit and then asked them to show me references of websites and general design which they like and feel comfortable with, feel like they could represent their brand well. At the end of the session, we all sat together and quickly tried to sketch out the layout and content for the website. This is a really, really high level wireframing sketch just to understand the general idea of where the website is going. Today's meeting was a big success. The team approved the strategy and I can clearly understand what's needed in terms of the brand update and also the website. On the next episode, we're actually gonna get down and design the brand update and the website. And this is going to be exciting. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and stay tuned for the next episode. Guys, I'm really excited to hear in the comments what you thought about this episode. I've been working on this series for months now and it's finally out there. Looking forward to hearing what you think. And of course, if you'd like to learn more about my process for web design and resources, check the description for links. And I'll see you on the next episode.